This is part one of a three-part lecture on the basics of how genes work by Dr. Lauren Lownan in the Department of Biology at Keene State College. So what we're going to talk about first is what is a gene, and then we're going to talk about what is referred to as the central dogma, including the roles of uh, two cellular processes known as transcription and translation. Just to give you a head up, heads up, a lot of students have trouble um, differentiating between transcription and translation. These are really important things to learn about if you want to understand how cells work. So it's really important that as you're learning, you really try to clarify whether you're talking about transcription or whether you're talking about translation and coming up with ways of keeping those two sets of information separate. Both of them pertain to the synthesis of proteins and functional RNAs. They're both very important, but they are distinct cellular processes. Okay, let's talk about what a gene is. For a you know really detailed and sophisticated um, ability to understand how life works, you could define a gene as written here. A section of DNA, or in some viruses RNA, that encodes information for building one or more related polypeptides or functional RNA molecules along with the regulatory sequences required for its transcription. That's a very sophisticated definition appropriate for students of the natural sciences um, or those who are simply very interested in the natural sciences and in, in knowing detail. I, I think that another way of thinking about a gene is a sequence of DNA that encodes a protein or functional RNA. Again, a sequence of DNA that encodes a protein or functional RNA. I think for all of us um, at the college level, we need to move beyond the idea that um, a gene is the blueprint for a trait. That's too simplistic. So I would like you to use either the definition written or the one that I just stated. Where are genes? Genes are encoded by DNA, and the DNA is found in chromosomes. Chromosomes are made up of both DNA and um, protein in a structure known as chromatin. I want to remember that in eukaryotic organisms such as ourselves, our chromosomes occur in linear pairs. There's a pair shown there, and we inherited one of them from each parent, one from the mom, one from the dad. Each pair has essentially the same kind of sequences on it. So they are matching pairs in that you'll have the same gene on each chromosome. So you can imagine these yellow bands here representing a particular gene. You have two versions of the gene, or two alleles. One came from mom, one came from dad. The overall sequence will be very, very similar, but they could be different. So they could be different by one nucleotide, or they could be different by a few nucleotides. They encode the same gene, but they're from different sources, and there can be sequence variability. All of those chromosomes are found compacted in a structure called a nucleus, if you're talking about a eukaryotic cell. If it's a prokaryotic cell, those are the cells that belong to bacteria and archaea, there's no nucleus, and instead you actually have one circular chromosome, they are haploid organisms, and it's just found at a location in the cell called a nucleoid. So every single one of our cells, and we have trillions and trillions of human cells, each contain a nucleus, and each nucleus has our full genetic complement, or our full genome, which means 23 pairs of chromosomes, all occurring in matched pairs, unless you're male, in which case your XY chromosomes are different. The X chromosome is much bigger, the Y chromosome is much smaller. That's something we'll talk about more in genetics if you move on to take that course in biology. So what is the central dogma? This is a saying or a, that we use in science to talk about how genetic information flows in a cell. So here we see a eukaryotic cell. I know it's a eukaryotic cell because the DNA is in a nucleus. It's a simplified cartoon. That DNA is there in chromosomes, and we're really focusing on just one specific short region of DNA or a gene. So this represents... A gene, okay? Not the entire chromosome. 
that gene is being used to make a very important molecule called messenger RNA. That's this, okay, shown in yellow. That process, as depicted by this arrow, is the process of transcription. And it's done by something called RNA polymerase. That messenger RNA is exported from the nucleus, that's what's happening here, and then it reaches an important cellular structure called the ribosome. Ribosomes are made out of protein and ribosomal RNA. The ribosome takes that messenger RNA and it basically interprets it and use that, uses that information to make protein. What's actually coming out of there is a polypeptide or protein primary sequence. As soon as that little green protein comes out of there, it's going to reach the watery, or it's going to be in the watery environment of the cell, and it's going to respond by beginning to fold. It's going to assume secondary and then tertiary structure. If it's a protein that's part of a quaternary complex, it'll go off and find its other uh, polypeptides and form the final protein. But that is basically what we mean by the central dogma or how information flows in the cell. It's the idea that DNA is used to make RNA. RNA is used to make protein. So DNA to RNA to protein.